Good morning, it's Stacy from PeonyLaneDesigns.com. Have you subscribed to the channel yet? If not, click the little blue button. Don't forget to click the subscribe button, comment down below, like this video, and click the bell icon to be notified. Yes, I'm cold. <laughs> it felt really cold in my house today. <laughs> the furnace is on. It's all fine. It's just for some reason my body was like, I don't want to. <laughs> Maybe because I know I'm on a liquid diet today and I have to go through all the process, you know, for the Kona. <laughs> but I have a couple hours before I have to drink laxative like my life depended on it. I'm very much not looking forward to that. Um, we're going to work on this today. What was I going to tell you guys? I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, getting old sucks. Anyway, I got distracted by the cold. By the fact that I look cold. I do look cold because I'm cold. Woo we are going to sand on this a little bit. I wanted to kind of take the rough edges off. This is just a 120 tanning block. My brother-in-law gave me these for Christmas or my husband. Who gave me the sanding blocks? One of the men in my life gave me <laughs> like who gave me. It was my husband. And then, um, yeah, it was probably my husband because it's 3M. And then, um, handy tip for me, if you have a sanding block, I write the grit on the end because it's on the packaging. But then once you take it out of the packaging, and I have another one somewhere that's a different grit that he bought me. Um, always, write, always write your grit on the end, both ends, to make it easy on yourself. So just a handy little tip from me. Um, sandy blo sanding blocks are amazing. They're wonderful because they can get into like the angle on this one can get into like detail areas and stuff like that. My husband uses them religiously. He's a sanding block guy. I like sandpaper because I don't like the feel of this in my hand. Um, but in some situations, it's just ideal. Not necessarily this one, but it was close. It was, it was near me, so I grabbed it. So I'm sanding the paper edges that were hard and sticking up just to kind of, you can see, they've come off there. And we're going to distress it a bit. Why? Because it wouldn't play nice with me yesterday, so it's going to be distressed. <laughs> sort of like... You, you do a piece of furniture and it's perfect condition and then some customer grabs something, drags it across the tabletop and scratches it and you're like, let's grab the sanding bag and make it shabby chic. It just becomes a more distressed piece because you've already got it in the shop. You don't want to take it home and redo it. You just grab some sandpaper and make it part of the dance, right? So I've been saying that a lot lately for some reason. If you stumble, make it part of the dance. When I was getting ready for Christmas, I had um, inventory that I could not fit in my garage. I had that table, that trunk table that didn't sell. Couldn't get it in the garage. I staged it on the porch with a rocking horse and bows. And my husband goes, oh, that looks really nice. I'm like, when you stumble, make it part of the dance, right? Because I'm like, I have literally nowhere to put this. So it had been on the porch, but not staged for a while. So I just made it super pretty for my inventory to be showing. I did that with a chair also that's out there. I had done that a while ago with that chair. And then my husband liked the chair so much, it just became part of our decor. Um, what I'm doing now is you can see with the sanding block, I'm hitting the edge that was sticking up here and it's, the paper gets quite soft and then it's easier to pull away. So we don't have that sharp piece that's standing up. 
Just distressing it, just distressing it. I love this paper because it's, when you sand it, it gets soft. Like the fibers start to pull apart and it looks really distressed, but it also feels soft. So it gives it a nice texture. Whereas, you know, like having a piece of paper with texture is not necessarily a good thing, but then you sand it down and it just starts to become pretty. Anyway, I've got a couple hours here before I have to make myself miserable. I am on a liquid diet right now. I'm wildly unhappy about it. At least I got coffee this morning. Okay, I may trim off some of the hairs that stick up though. It's like it's pilling. I'm just giving it a haircut. It's hard to show you guys on camera, but I'm just trimming off the little edges that are pilled. You can't really see it, can you? Can you see stuff flying off of it? the little pieces that I'm trimming. <sighs> I, oh yeah, I remember what I was going to tell you. So I made an Etsy sale last night, which yay, I'm happy about that. However, again, now this is the fifth one that I've sold that just happens to be one of the very first pieces I ever listed on Etsy. And I mean, I, they've been sitting there just renewing and renewing and renewing for a very long time. I mean, I think I started the Etsy store in 2016. Believe me, during the pandemic, I was glad mine was up and running because there were a lot of people that were behind the eight ball trying to get an online presence because, you know, pandemic. Now I'm taking some of the paint off while I chat. But I'm just really surprised because it's almost like Etsy is promoting my really old product. This was a candy dish that I thought, I'm never going to sell. I mean, you're at the point where I'm like, should I take the listing down? Because clearly no one wants it. And then all of a sudden it sells. And this angle has, is so nice because I'm distressing in here where the detail is and this just fits right along there and I can go oh, and push a little pressure in that area but it only hits inside the detail so it's kind of nice I like these sanding blocks at the angle yes you can fold a piece of sandpaper and do the same thing but this is just convenient not gonna lie, it's just convenient. Because I'm not folding and unfolding and folding and unfolding, trying to get flat surface and then tight surface. It's just, it's just right there, ready to go. That's why it's convenient. I had to explain myself. Because I think things in my head, but they don't come out my mouth, then I give you half of the answer. And people go, what are you, what is she saying? <laughs> Why is it convenient? Because I don't have to fold and refold when I'm working flat surface, tight surface, flat surface, tight surface, instead of taking a piece of sandpaper and folding it into a square, you know, a tight little area and then making it flat. It's not that big of a, an issue, but this is just slightly more convenient.
But I don't know what's going on with Etsy and they're selling suddenly all this really old stuff. I mean, this candy dish, y'all. First of all, it's $65, which yay. But it is kind of a big piece. So it's going to be kind of a nightmare to ship because very delicate. Very, very delicate. Um, and it's an antique. A true antique. This thing is over 100 years old. Not really looking forward to packing it and shipping it because I just then pucker for a week till it gets to its destination. This particular one is going to North Carolina. It is a gorgeous piece. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous piece. It's a cobalt blue candy dish. You can still see it in my Etsy shop if you go to um, Etsy P Lane Designs because Peony Lane was taken. Uh, P Lane Designs, which if you do your Etsy store, please think about your name because it looks like Plain Designs. And now when I look at it, I go, well, that was stupid. But it's been up for so long now. I've got so many sales on it that I can't really change it. I want to get a little bit of this where I kind of, the paint got a little gloopy off. This Alden one sands nice. Like where it's thick, it sands down really nice. And blends in pretty good too. It's a little more distressing. And then I'm gonna glaze this. Let's see how it looks with the clock face. Just because I want to see it. Yeah, right? So you can see. It became a little floral masterpiece. A little more fuzzies up here. I have to trim those. All right, so the clock face looks good in there. And it fits. That's a bonus. I did not check that yesterday. I know, I feel like a polar bear too, but I'm warm. Glaze. Now, I have been debating all night over the smoky glaze and the aging glaze. I'm still gonna go with the smoke. I don't know how it's gonna look. This has got more of a cool tone. I tend to like the warm tones better. So we'll see, let's get this open. I'll get you guys switched around. I'm gonna need to get some water on a cloth so I can dab it off because I don't want it too much. Okay. And we'll get this finished up and we'll have a complete project. I'm thinking of taking the other pink pieces that I have and putting them in the booth because I have this gray table with a green table on top that I'm keeping in there and I might stage that with a bunch of pink stuff. Just be more florally and springy. But I'm also, you know, clearancing a few things, so... Hopefully it'll be a good month. January's notoriously bad. I just need it to be an average month. Not a bad month, not a good month. Just average. Average would be good for January, but Etsy seems to be picking up some slack, which is, God bless it. I can't thank my angels and everything enough. I mean, last night when that came in, I was like, thank you. <laughs> uh, it'll be nice to pick up my vintage junkie check this month because that also picked up. So my sales there went up, my picket sales went down, and then my Etsy sales went up. But I'm like, I am so glad I'm not in one location, in one place, because it's, it's devastating. Like when I was only at picket, 
it was devastating when there was a bad month. And being online helps because it doesn't take anything away from what I'm doing. Like having the online presence, you list it and then you can just leave it there. And it kind of does its own thing until something sells. And then you have something you got to do. Um, but that has really helped offset. So my sales are coming back up. Remember when I was, I think it was last year, when sales went down a lot on Etsy. And now they're coming back up. And I'm going, I didn't do anything different. So it's got to be their algorithm. I'm going to take all this stuff off because I don't want to get any glaze on my pretty scarf. I love this scarf. I don't want to get it dirty. So I'll be back. No, I didn't clean up my brushes yesterday. Why would I have cleaned up my brushes yesterday? Got a wet cloth. Got the clock. Got the smoked glaze. So we're going to put that right over the top. Yeah, I like the cool colors coming through. No. Nope. No, 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 no. I don't like the smoked on the pink. I don't, I don't like it. I like the warm. See, this is more warm. Yeah, there we go. I'd be happy with that. I have to figure out what I like the the smoke on. So I am going to let it sit for a minute before wiping it off. Going to wipe it off. And I'll be honest, I mean, if you guys have watched the channel for any length of time, I did not like glazing when I first did it because here I had painted a pristine piece and then we just wrecked it. <laughs> it took me a while to realize it was that step that I was missing to take pieces like this, the distress pieces, to the next level. It just gives it a different look, dimensional look. Like it sits in here. You know, it does change the color of the paint, but it sits in those little cracks and crevices and just gives it that little extra aged look. Instead of just, I sanded this to give it a shabby chic look. It just, it's that final step. Ooh, how did that happen? Okay. This was not here. I just wiped glaze away and it took a big chunk of the paint. So this Dixie Belle paint, all in one, you don't have to sand, bull. Total BS. See, this is why these chalk and mineral paints irritate me because that sat overnight to dry. I just wiped it and it came away. <laughs> okay, all right. That's the end. We're done. We've glazed. Okay. I'm going to stop picking at it now. And then we'll let it dry. And we will get it put back together. The face back on. Make sure 12 is at the top. There we go.
Okay, which side? <laughs> yeah, I think this had a plate over it at one time. It does not anymore. Does that fit in there? That's not annoying at all. Come on. Is this, this, this one's in. That one is not in. And there it is. Ta-da! Now I think we need a battery just to make sure. It said it worked, but let's find out. And it's working. Now it just needs a price tag and to be put in the put in the booth. Now it has the comforting tick, 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 or the annoying tick, 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 tick. It depends on your perspective. <laughs> Uh, for some people, they hate that noise. I, I tend to think it's comforting to hear just this tick, tick, tick. You know, it's just one of those. I don't know. I don't know if it's like a ADHD thing or what, but I know a lot of people find it very irritating. I have several clocks that tick, <laughs> and my husband hates it. <laughs> anyway, that's my project for today. I'm now going to go chug some laxative and and drink water and and broth. I already have a headache. I need food. My husband said, after this colonoscopy tomorrow, are you able to eat food? I'm like, yes, and I'm eating a lot of food. I probably won't eat a lot of food, but I really just want like a sandwich. <laughs> Can I have a sandwich? <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, you guys. Happy chunking. Bye. Visit my blog, peonylanedesigns.com, for more tips, tricks, and inspiration. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll be notified of new videos. I post every week. DIY tutorials, and of course, more Junkin' videos.